unique hard rubber mouthpiece that plays great for less than $200. Let's take a look at the ASC Mistral. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button to practice your hand refacing technique. Now today we're talking about the ASC Avell Sound Concept Mistral Mouthpiece. Let's start with the disclosures. I did not buy this mouthpiece. It was sent to me by Max, the owner. I had gone on a popular saxophone forum as part of my searching for the best Meyer that's not a Meyer. This came highly recommended by many of the members and Max reached out and asked if I'd like to try one. I said, sure. So I did not pay for this, but I also have no financial incentive for selling them. I'm not an affiliate, so if you buy one, I don't make any money. So the package arrived in a very sensible and attractive package. We get a recyclable cardboard tube with good branding and nice logo sticker. A pouch that looks like natural fiber. He's going to change to a natural option. This is actually synthetic, but you get a nice little carrying pouch. And the actual mouthpiece, which is a highly polished hard rubber that actually does have a really attractive luster and shine to it. We have Mistral engraved on the side and the ASC logo engraved on top. No color printing of any kind, but a very high polished, understated, but classy looking appearance. Now, according to Max, this was inspired by two of his favorite mouthpieces, a Meyer and a Brillhart Tonalin. In my mind, in my playing experience, this is much more influenced by the Meyer. I did not see much of an influence by the Tonalin, but as far as Meyers go, a lot of positive things that keep this in line with very good Myers. So like the Meyer that inspired this, there's a lot of similar specs. We've got a rollover baffle. Now there is a little bit more of a defined baffle on this. It's got an arch shape to it and a rather steep drop off. It's still a rollover baffle. It's not aggressive, but it is a little bit more assertive than the longer rollover baffle on the modern current Meyer production by J.J. Babbitt, as hopefully you can see in this comparison. Now paired with the medium round chamber, like the Meyer, it has a very nice transparent core. The high end is brilliant, bordering on bright, but I would say brilliant. It's not strident, but you hear what I'm talking about in a second. These side rails look very nicely done. Uh, symmetrical tip rail was nice as well, and I found it to be very reed friendly. A variety of reed brands, strengths, and cuts worked very well on this. So overall, the playing experience was comfortable, vibrant, and surprisingly flexible. So as a player, I found the sound very vibrant, but very easy to control. As a matter of fact, let's take a listen to me just playing pianissimo to fortissimo, back to pianissimo. It felt incredibly easy to do so on this mouthpiece while generally keeping the same core sound. The low end is quite comfortable as well. It tends to have a clearer, crisper sound to the low end. Absolutely capable of subtoning, but in general, the low end response is clear and quick and fairly easy. <laughs> And perhaps what I like best about this mouthpiece is the tip rail and rail combination with that baffle. 
it's got a very fast, crisp response that even as I went up in strength and reads, I could use a traditional cut Van Dorn. It still sounded very crisp, very clear, and very easy to articulate. <laughs> Now, the high end is very Meyer-like, much more so than the tonal end, in my experience. And I found the highs to be brilliant, bordering on bright, but not so much that it's not unpleasant. If you like the way a Meyer plays in the palm keys, you're going to like this as well. It never felt difficult to control. Nothing got away from me, but it does have a brilliant or airing towards the brighter high end. Now, that slight more edge and brilliance, I don't mind at all, especially this week, because part of what I'm doing this week is reviewing the Selmer Supreme, which I found to be surprisingly dark, shall we say, compared to my Mark VI. So to really make it sing and feel comfortable, I found the uh, ASC Mistral to be a really good combination to help push a slightly darker modern Selmer horn. <laughs> So overall, I find it a very compelling package. Slightly under $200, but hard rubber, well-finished, and a very fun playing experience. So if you're looking for a holiday gift for you or a loved one, I think this is a very good choice. If you want to buy one, I'll put a link down below. Again, I'm not an affiliate, and I have no financial interest in this, though I would encourage you to support small business like ASC and Max, his company. Now, I will be back next week when we take a look at the Selmer Supreme. And we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I hope to see you next week then. Hope you're having a good holiday season. Unless you're watching this later in the year of the summer, then I hope you're having a good whatever season you're in. I will see you next week. Go practice. <laughs>